Hey there, how's it going? We're going to start section 9.6 right now, and we're going to be working with symmetry. Two types of symmetry I'm going to be teaching you about today. Um, one of those is line symmetry. You're expected to be able to identify when a figure has line symmetry, also known as reflectional symmetry. And the second type of symmetry is rotational symmetry. It's also known as point symmetry or radial symmetry. You might have heard that term in biology class, for instance. Well, let's go ahead and talk about these two different types of symmetries, beginning with line symmetry. And line symmetry is one that I know that you are familiar with. A figure has line symmetry or reflectional symmetry anytime it's possible to reflect the figure in a line of symmetry and get it to match up onto itself. So for instance, if I were to reflect the left half of this butterfly in this line, it would match up exactly with the right half of the butterfly, right? So this is a line of symmetry. And of course, lines of symmetry can be found in nature. That's why I put a couple of these pictures out there for you. They can be found in art. They can be found in architecture, as you see here with the old Taj Mahal. I didn't exactly get that line of symmetry in the right place, but you can recognize that it does have a line of symmetry, correct? And you can have figures that have many lines of symmetry. The starfish, for instance, would have five lines of symmetry. It'd have one here, have one there, have one there, basically through every one of its points, correct? And no matter which one of those lines of symmetry you fold the starfish over in, it's going to match up exactly with itself. That's the idea behind line symmetry. Nothing more that needs to be said about line symmetry. I assume you get that concept pretty well. You've worked with it all your life, pretty much. Now for rotational symmetry. Rotational symmetry is really cool. It's something that you've seen and maybe just never put a, a term to before. All right. Um, rotational symmetry is when it's possible to rotate a figure around its center and get it to map onto itself. Now watch what I do here with this flower. Um, you see how it's rotated right now and it looks a certain way. Well, if I rotated it right there, it looks just like it did a moment ago. If I rotate it again right there, it looks just like it did a moment ago. And I could keep rotating around and I could get the figure to look exactly like it did at the beginning. All right, now let me actually put it back like it was at the beginning. That's what rotational symmetry is. It's when you can rotate a figure around its center 180 degrees or less and get it to map onto itself. And when you recognize that a figure has rotational symmetry, one of the things that you ought to be able to do is figure out what angles of rotation could map the figure onto itself. So, this isn't exactly lines of symmetry that I'm drawing, but it's going to look kind of similar. I'm going to draw some lines here to help us out with this. All right, right there would be the center of rotation, of course. And when I'm trying to figure out what the angle of rotation that would map it onto itself is, what I want to think about is how many congruent sections does this particular figure have? And then what angle would I have to rotate one of those sections to in order to get the map on to the next of those sections? So I've drawn one line and you can kind of see I've divided the sections up by going between the petals of the flower. So the next line that would cover the same kind of thing would be right there. And I could keep drawing that all around. Now notice these aren't exactly lines of symmetry. They, I mean, they pretty much are, but that's not the point. The point is, how far would I have to rotate the figure before it maps onto itself? Well, that rotation right there would map the figure onto itself, right? Now, what I have here are five congruent angles that I could rotate this flower around. And if you think about a full rotation being 360 degrees, well, each of these angles would have to be one-fifth of that, wouldn't it? So that would be 72 degree angles. All right. So what angles of rotation would map this figure onto itself? Well, a 72 degree angle would certainly do it, right? But it turns out there's a little bit more than that because couldn't I just rotate two sections at once? If I went like this, 144 degrees, that would map it onto itself as well. And I could keep going further, but we're only going to care about rotations that are 180 degrees or less. So there's an example of rotational symmetry. And I just want to show you a couple of pictures with rotational symmetry. Uh, here's another. Uh, art often uses rotational symmetry. 
So I'm not exactly sure what this art piece is, but it's pretty cool looking nonetheless. And I'm going to do the same thing with this thing to show you what the rotational symmetry is that I did with that flower in the previous picture. First, I just kind of like the fact that I can rotate this figure like that. So I just rotated it, and it looks exactly like it did before. I just rotated it, looks exactly like it did before. Rotated it, looks exactly like it did before. And I could do that a whole lot of times with this particular figure, couldn't I? So you definitely see that it has rotational symmetry. And where or what angles would map this figure onto itself? Let's figure that out. Let's go ahead and put our center there. And then let's draw lines through each section. I'm going to go kind of like I was going between the petals before with the flower. I'll go between these red things. I don't have a clue how to classify them on this figure. I'm going to pause and just go ahead and do the rest of them at once. Pretty cool, right? My lines actually seem to add to the art a little bit. Now, we want to know how many of these congruent turns could we create in order to map this figure onto itself. How many of these sections, congruent sections, are there in this figure? Well, we have, I'll start right here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve of those things going around here. And twelve of them put together makes 360 degrees, so each one would have to be 30 degrees, right? So you can map this thing onto itself with a 30 degree angle of rotation around the center. And you could just go ahead and do two sections at once and make 60 degrees, or really any multiple of 30 degrees will work. If you rotate it 90 degrees, it'll map onto itself. And we only care about angles up to 180, so we'll do 120, 150, and 180 degrees. Those are the angles that would map onto itself. Pretty cool, right? Let's check out one more type of problem here then. Actually, one more picture than another type of problem. I showed you the starfish earlier and said that it had the reflectional or the line symmetry, and it also has rotational symmetry, doesn't it? Now, it would end up with five congruent sections just like that flower, so angles of 72 degrees and 144 degrees would map it onto itself, but I thought it worth mentioning that a figure can have both line symmetry and rotational symmetry, although it doesn't have to have both. It can just have one or the other. So a lot of figures have neither. All right, well, here I have a couple figures that I'm asking, does the figure have rotational symmetry? Because I know you recognize the line symmetry. And if it does, describe any rotations that map the figure onto itself. Well, this first figure is a rhombus, isn't it? Because it's an equilateral quadrilateral. Does a rhombus have rotational symmetry? Well, absolutely it does. Now, I can't physically rotate this like I did the photographs earlier, but you can imagine how I could rotate this point all the way around to here, and the rhombus is going to look exactly like it did before. So that's a rotation of 180 degrees or less. That means the figure does have rotational symmetry. And actually, 180 degrees is the only angle that would map that particular rhombus onto itself. Now I'm going to start describing the rotations. And we can say that the rhombus is mapped onto itself by a rotation of 180 degrees. The way you describe a rotation is you state the angle of rotation that would map it onto itself. And you also can mention the words clockwise or counterclockwise. Either one would work. I know our textbook uses clockwise rotations, sorry, counterclockwise rotations only in the rotation section. But we could rotate this either way 180 degrees and it would map onto itself, correct? Now what about that isosceles trapezoid that you see over there? would it have rotational symmetry? Well, unfortunately, no. I could rotate this point all the way around and get it to map onto itself. If you have an, a device of some kind, you might actually try to rotate the figure 180 degrees right now and see that it doesn't look exactly like it did before you spun it. But you have to spin this thing 360 degrees to get it to map onto itself. And if it's any more than 180 degrees that you have to go, then it doesn't count for rotational symmetry. So there's no rotational symmetry for this isosceles trapezoid. So anyway, that's a quick look then into reflectional or line symmetry, as well as rotational or point symmetry. Hope it was cool. Hope you learned something from it. See you later.